When you're in British Columbia, the rest of Canada can seem like it is a long way away. You know, Quebecers may talk about distinct society as though they invented the phrase, but out in British Columbia, people know they're not just different. They're so far away, they're practically inaudible. You know, again, Quebecers may get upset when they think they're being ignored in Ottawa. British Columbians are used to it. Albertans may fume about paying equalization forever and ever to no apparent recognition. In British Columbia, that's just how things are. As Jerry McGeer, who's a mayor of Vancouver back in the 30s, once said, it's 3,000 miles from Vancouver to Ottawa, but 30,000 miles the other way. And the rest of the province is even more remote. One thing about that, it lets British Columbians do things differently. It's the only province that ever ran an entire election on a basis other than first past the post. Mind you, it was won by a party without a leader. Maybe that was getting a little extravagant. There's also the first province to have a female premier, first province to have an Indo-Canadian premier. The only female Prime Minister of Canada is from British Columbia, born in Port Alberni, Representative Vancouver Riding. It is an odd kind of alienation. For instance, it was British Columbia that rejected the Charlottetown Accord, the central Canadian elite's consensus project, most decisively, 68% no vote. Yet it's also British Columbia, proportionally, that provided the most volunteers in both world wars. But I think perhaps the most telling sign of alienation is that British Columbia, a majority of BC MPs, have only been from the same party as the Prime Minister nine times in 21 elections since the Second World War. In British Columbia, they just don't feel connected to the rest of the country politically. This is one alienated province.